Uh, welcome back to another web development video where I'll show you how to make modern websites using HTML5, CSS3, and a little bit of JavaScript. <clears throat> In this video, I'm going to show you uh, what container queries are and how we can use them in our layouts. <clears throat> so before I get into sort of uh, the nuts and bolts of the co code, I guess, I just wanted to, to give you a, a, an example of what we're going to build and just sort of what we're talking about uh, with container queries. <clears throat> so we have a page here. I have a little toggle here that toggles uh, the layout of this middle section. So we have our header, uh, this whole big section here with these two sections in it <laughs> is our main. Uh, so it's going to be for our main content. And then we have a black footer down here. And what we do, this is sort of the default layout with the 50-50 split between the content and the sidebar. <clears throat> if we click on this toggle, it'll toggle a class that we put on this whole big main section uh, that makes this, <clears throat> this turns this grid from 1FR and 1FR. to 1FR. Sorry, it makes it. Uh, this section is 1FR, and this section, I believe, is two or 300 pixels. So <clears throat> let's say uh, we give the user some option uh, to change the layout of the website, or um, maybe when they're logged in, they get some different sort of layout. Or <clears throat> there's some other way uh, to change the layout on the fly like this. So this is just being done with JavaScript, just a simple toggle class. That's all. But uh, I know I've made some single page applications, especially where you never leave uh, the page, you never leave the viewport, but you are able to manipulate the layout. So <clears throat> to me, container queries are great for this. The, the use case that you usually see is different than this. So maybe this adds something new to the conversation. And what a container query does is, well, you can see it here. So we have our, uh, this is responding to what looks like a media query. Right, so I know that I can do this with media queries. When the when the viewport changes, <clears throat> then I can manipulate this grid inside of here. Like I can do this to all these items. But what happens when the layout changes, but the viewport stays the same? So now, when that happens, I don't have access to the media queries anymore because the size of the device viewport is not changing. It's actually the layout inside of the website is changing without any sort of uh, impetus or mm, change from the actual viewport itself. You know, the user is most likely not going to go and, and do this part, you know, and change all the viewports. <clears throat> so this is a different sort of a, a more in-depth um, sort of responsive design, I guess is how we, it's still responsive design. But now we're responding to users and what they're doing inside of our applications or even data as it comes in and how it changes uh, our layouts. So everything is sort of responding internally to each other as opposed to this external response. So a uh, container query just says, when this container, and this is the one that we're changing, <clears throat> when this light blue container, when it changes, do something to the elements inside of it. Now, this is sort of a component-based uh, idea. So to me, uh, this is moving us toward uh, how can we accommodate React, Angular, to, uh, whatever's coming next, different sorts of component-type frameworks or uh, <clears throat> JavaScript frameworks that use components, uh, or even in the HTML, you can write your own components. Um, even if you're not using a framework per se, you can use different types of templates and components inside the HTML. So uh, it, it really, what happens is once this container gets called a container, <clears throat> then you can manipulate everything inside of here 
and it scopes only to what's inside this container. Your styles are not going to go outside the borders of the container that you have called. So uh, we can actually control um, only the styles inside of this container if we want to. <clears throat> so that creates some interesting new possibilities for CSS, um, possibly even removing CSS from the JavaScript, which would be great, and uh, only focusing on uh, delivery and markup <clears throat> uh, for our components. So, and <clears throat> I watched a video from Google. They're they're looking even farther down the road uh, than just containers. Um, they're looking at uh, how we how can we scope our CSS in our style sheets, similarly to the way that you might scope your CSS in the JavaScript. So that's coming down the road. That's on the roadmap. We'll see if that comes and happens. Uh, but that's the way that people are thinking <clears throat> at places like Google. So this is what we're going to build. And again, whenever you change the layout inside the page, but the viewport hasn't changed, how can we make those changes? Uh, we need to listen without JavaScript. We need to listen for changes. <clears throat> uh, so this allows us with no JavaScript to listen for changes to the different elements inside the HTML and make appropriate changes uh, to layout, to size, to any sorts of CSS properties uh, that you can think of. <clears throat> so I have this here. Um, <clears throat> this is the same layout, just without any of the container query styles. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can see <clears throat> you can see that we have <clears throat> our header, uh, which is going to be called masthead here. And then we have our trigger inside that. Uh, we have our main container, and that's both of these sections put together. It's all one big, huge container. And then we have a footer, which is down here. Uh, inside of main, we have the content, which is the blue area, the dark blue. <clears throat> and then we have sidebar, which is the light blue over here. Inside sidebar, uh, we have a little header, and then we have this grid that we're calling our item grid. And then each item has its own header and then text and image, right? So each of these is sort of like a card or a group. And so uh, we have three of those, four of those three right now. And whenever we manipulate <clears throat> the page, you can see that this main grid is um, grid template columns, uh, one FR, which is this side. And then this side is a minimum of 200 pixels, a maximum of one FR. So it will shrink and stay one 50, 50, basically <clears throat> until it gets down to 200 pixels and then it stops shrinking. So that's how you use min max. But because this one is one FR, it will continue to shrink. If I were doing this on a mobile, I would not let it get that far before I change the layout <clears throat> a little bit. I would make this just one single column with sections stacked on each other. But uh, just for the sake of, of being able to easily see how these things scrunch down, I'm just leaving it like it is. So uh, what we're doing is <clears throat> we need to make this a container, this light blue section. That needs to be a container. Uh, we already have, uh, this is what changes our layout. So basically when you click here, it applies this to main. And then main switches from a 1FR min max and all this to just one FR and 200 pixels. So it just sort of pushes it all the way to its smallest dimension. And then we can just toggle that. That's just a toggle from in jQuery. <clears throat> um, nothing particularly interesting here, just some sort of, you know, uh, you can see here that we're 
we're making sure that our masthead spans both columns. <clears throat> we have sort of an overarching uh, app class here that contains all of our different sections. It contains our header, our main, our footer. And then <clears throat> because we have that sort of wrapping uh, container over all of our content, we can just use that to create whatever we want as far as like an overarching grid design. Uh, so we have one and then we have a 50-50 and then we have this one that spans uh, both columns as well. Uh, so one of the really cool parts about using grid is being able to <clears throat> just sort of manipulate your entire um, sort of your entire super layout, your outer layout, um, pretty easily um, over the long run. Uh, okay, well, I think we're ready. So we need to make this a container. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. We go into our sidebar. That's what this light blue one is called. You can see it's got our light blue background. <clears throat> and in order to start the process of creating a container query, we need to contain something. We need to create a container. The way you do that with CSS is you say contain, and then we're going to use layout, and we're going to use style, and we're going to use inline size. Okay, so those are the three values that we need. Uh, you don't need to put a, <clears throat> a comma between them. If you go and you look on Mozilla or you look in some other places, this contain property actually has uh, lots of different values that you can use. But as far as container queries specifically are concerned, we're, gonna, we're looking at layout. So this creates the sidebar and it doesn't create it. It makes it a container. Uh, it makes the sidebar, this light blue, the whole section is now a container. And so if we come down to, um, we can come down to the very end even, <clears throat> and we can say, instead of at media and then whatever, we say at container. So we have all types of different things. We have at media, we have at, um, what else do we do? Supports, uh, where you can like input features and stuff like that. So uh, we actually have a, a query for containers and that's why it's called a, a container query. So this is the syntax that we're using for that. Um, I'm writing in SAS and it does work in SAS. Uh, but what we need here is just like we write a media query, we need a minimum width or a maximum width or something like that. You can do from this to that, right? The same as, as a media query. We're doing almost the same thing. We're only doing it on this container though, as opposed to doing it on the whole page. So we're going to listen for the container. <clears throat> and when it gets to a minimum width of, let's say 400 pixels, then we want to do whatever's inside of this container query. And what I want to do is when it gets to 400 pixels, I want to take this image. I want to put it here on the left and I want this title and all this text to come up so that they're in line. So that there's an image and text, image and text. And that's when this gets to 400 pixels, not when the, not when the entire viewport gets to 400 pixels, although that's what we're going to see first. It's when this container gets to 400 pixels. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look at this. And what we want <clears throat> is, let's see, we want our, let's think about how we do this. We want our item here to be display flex, okay? So let's say item <clears throat> display flex. Okay, so we see that it gets flexed, right? Uh, actually, I'm just going to do display grid. Uh, to me, I feel like grid is easier or better. And then we're going to say grid 
template columns, uh, 1FR, 1FR. And <clears throat> we're going to say gap, uh, one rim. So create a little gap there. So you can see. So this is, is doing exactly what we need to do. Um, we need our H3 margin. to be zero, I think. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that pulls everything up a little bit. So you can see there that we get, in fact, if we do, instead of one FR, if we just do, uh, <clears throat> this creates sort of a two thirds type of situation. And maybe that's okay. Maybe not, doesn't seem great. Uh, so let's just do something like 150 pixels and one FR. How about that? Okay. So our images are gonna stay 150 pixels wide. <clears throat> and then our text has a little bit of room uh, to just sort of wrap and, and do what it needs to do. Um, Okay, margin is zero. Uh, everything here is probably fine. <clears throat> and you can see it's just gonna stay like that, regardless how big this container gets. But again, <clears throat> it's happening because this thing, this container is um, also, it's changing with the viewport, right? So it's gonna act just like a media query for now. <clears throat> And when we change the layout, you can see that it no longer uh, changes or anything. Um, there's no way to do this uh, whenever you're changing the layout without changing the viewport as well. Okay, there's no way to do that. This is the only <laughs> is the only way to do this so far. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's do another one. So when we get to Let's say when the container gets to 800, uh, yeah, let's say 800. And remember, we're thinking about the container width. We're not thinking about the viewport width. So you can see here uh, that the viewport width, well, let's go ahead and change it. Um, we'll go back to, we'll make this again, just one, <clears throat> okay. All right, so our viewport width down here is 1170, right? Uh, but the container width is 800 whenever we get to there. All right, so our viewport width is about 1150 to 1170, but our container width is where we want it to be, which is uh, this 800 pixels, right? So we've gone back to just a 1FR <clears throat> single column layout. And what I want to do is because we have enough space here, we don't want just these huge items over here. Uh, what I want to do is since we have uh, three of these, I can make a fourth, I guess. Um, what I want to do is I want to make a sort of a two column kind of layout here. So let's just add one more item just to make it nice and even. So we have our four items, one, two, three, four. And when our container gets to 800 pixels, we want this item grid. Let's see, where is it at right now? Item grid is just display grid. So let's go ahead and do, <clears throat> let's copy this to make it easier on us. And one FR and we'll say that the gap is going to be two rem. So <clears throat> you can see now uh, when we have enough space, when our container has enough space, it's going to go to uh, make our overall grid of all these items a two by two. Um, 
but when there's not as much space, then it makes sort of this media component. And <clears throat> when it starts to, you start to see that, you know, this is a good size to do this because anymore and you're going to start to break down the text and you're going to start to break down sort of the size of these media elements so that it starts to get a little wonky right here. And so right at that moment that it starts to get terrible, then we go back to our stacked four. So again, this is not media queries. This is not based on the viewport width. It's based on the width of this element right here. Uh, <clears throat> and the only reason that it's actually behaving that way is because it's uh, sort of a dynamic width uh, because of the viewport. So let's take a look at uh, what we have out here now that we have it saved and and ready to go. So this is what we have. And then whenever we, the real power comes whenever we change the layout without changing the, uh, without changing the viewport. So if we had done this as a media query and we had done it based on the changing viewport, whenever I click this, nothing would happen. These things would only get shrunk up. They would shrink. But, or what they would do is push the page off this way. Maybe we can try that. Maybe we can just copy these. Let's just see what happens if we do it with the, a media query. So I haven't tried this, so. So instead of container, let's just say a media. Okay. So that's sort of what I thought. And you can see how it, it sort of breaks down a little bit, right? When we were doing the container query, it was doing things, it was making the changes based on the container. And it looks okay for a while. But let's go out here and let's see how it looks whenever we change our layout. Okay, so now you see <laughs> now you see the issues that we're running into. Um, so we've changed the we've changed the layout without changing the viewport. So <laughs> you can see here that it's really screwed these things up over here. These are responding to the viewport, which hasn't changed but the layout has changed. So there's no way for them to respond to something. What they need to respond to is the changing layout, not the changing viewport size. So hopefully that helps you to get some conceptual understanding of what container queries are. When I watch the videos, it doesn't feel like anyone can explain it very well uh, or maybe even what some of the best use cases are. The use cases that I see are just sort of, I don't know, I, you know, I don't know. I would have to see more. But <clears throat> this is a use case that um, I could see happening quite a bit, uh, which is, let's get rid of all that stuff. Uh, and that's, that, that's only because I've built applications that do this, right? I've built single page applications um that do this uh in fact uh let's see i can show you one so this is a news site and what happens is this is just a single page application uh just has all of these stories but when you go to your settings i can go in and i can change the layout and see i can change it to a different the whole layout changes but i haven't changed anything here I haven't reloaded the page. I haven't changed the, the screen size or the viewport size. Um, again, I can change the layout here or I can go to, uh, the magazine doesn't allow me to do that, but I've got uh, you know two columns here. And so it changes uh, the layout of everything. Now, if uh, I wanted to change it based on the information coming in 
or I wanted to change it based on uh, some, some user preference or user preferences uh, that have been set by the account if I wanted to change it based on um, any number of things. But I don't want to reload the page. I just want the actual content to be dynamic to the actual website, not to the browser or to the device or the viewport. <clears throat> then I can use a media query in this way. In fact, if this were resizable and you could just drag it and pull it over, I would want everything to resize as I'm pulling and dragging this particular pane or this item, right? So that's sort of the idea. You see that kind of thing in, in different applications or in Windows or whatever you're using, <clears throat> Mac OS. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to change our content structure, our CSS, based on what's inside the website, not what's what the browser is doing, not how wide the device is, but what how wide are your elements inside the page. And normally you can get away with media queries because that's just sort of the first level of what we've been doing. <clears throat> but as we begin to build more sing single page applications, as we begin to get more of this, where layouts are changing based on user preference, based on user experience, based on previous history from users. We have all types of things we can dip into now. Um, as those things change and the user hits the page, we want these items to be dynamic and scoped only to the containers that they're in, not to the viewport. So this is where you would use container queries. Again, this is, it's not difficult uh, contextually. One thing that I've found that you have to remember is that this, and I haven't seen others use this, so I'm not sure how they get it to do it. But if you don't have that style thing, it doesn't seem to work, right? <laughs> so layout style in line size, and then that makes it work. Uh, I'm not sure why it doesn't work without it, um, but from what I've seen, it doesn't work without it. So it needs to have uh, it needs to have that in there in order to work. Um, and one of the tricky parts is that you have to set the container with this property of contain. Um, <clears throat> and so whatever whatever you set to have that property of contain, everything that you put in the media query or in the container query here, down here is scoped to the size of that element. So if this never changes, then all of these uh, changes that you make in here will never change, right? So if this was our initial layout, uh, these would be irrelevant because this container is set to a fixed width and it never changes. <clears throat> it's, when, it's when your element has a dynamic uh, size. Uh, and when we start our original, this is based on viewport size. Um, let's go and just reload that. Okay. So this element here, this sidebar, it's based on viewport widths. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, it's based on uh, viewport uh, fractional units, right? fractional units from CSS grid. So because the fractional unit represents um, the leftover space, so that if there's two elements and each is one FR, then one takes up the leftover space. After you put them next to each other, they each take up the leftover space. So uh, in essence, it's a 50-50. If this is a 2FR and this is 1FR, it's like a 2 thirds, 1 third layout. So they're taking up dynamic amounts of space based on the viewport width. Okay, you see how that works. So <clears throat> because this is dynamic, 
we need something that listens, sort of like an event listener in JavaScript. It's listening for the size of this container. And when this container reaches a certain width, whether it's because it's been changed by the layout, by a user changing the layout, or it's been changed because of the device size, either one then it responds, whatever we put inside of our query responds to that change. So it just happens to work out, like I said, that this is responding to viewport widths uh, because of the dynamic size here. But again, if the user changes it and changes this to a fixed width, now nothing happens because all of our changes are scoped not to the viewport width, their scope to this element's width. Okay. Hopefully, that's probably overkill. I'm sure. I'm sure it's overkill. Uh, but I hope that in explaining it from so many different viewpoints, that this very um, high level conceptual idea is a little bit more easily understood. Container queries have been coming for uh, I don't know, at least three or four years, and uh, people are seeing the need for it. They're now being put out there in Canary. Canary, uh, Chrome Canary is the only one that allows you to actually see these. Um, in fact, if you if you just open up a new instance of Chrome and you just go to Chrome Normal, I guess, uh, the production Chrome, and you input that, um, you don't get anything, right? So none of our container query changes are being made because this browser does not support it. And it's the same thing with the same thing with Firefox, Safari, Edge, etc. <clears throat> so you can only play with this in Canary. Uh, but realize that this is coming and has been coming for a long time. So I typically try to stay away from like uh, fly by night kinds of things where maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Uh, I try to sort of keep myself in the, this is really coming, this is gonna change the game kind of technology. So uh, hopefully this is uh, interesting to you. Hopefully you haven't abandoned me at this point, uh, but this is sort of next level CSS. Um, thinking more granularly about our queries and our responsive pages. So there are a million different ways to go with this. Uh, I'm sure that over the next five to 10 years, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna explore some of those ideas uh, as long as we can get it into a browser so we can use it. And then eventually, you know, it's gonna be, when it gets into a production browser, you can use the at supports uh, media query and you can actually, I mean, uh, <clears throat> uh, support query feature query, they call it. Uh, and you would say at supports, whatever this is. And then um, you'll be able to use maybe your container query uh, on browsers that have implemented that so far. All right, if you have any questions or comments, uh, I know it's been a while since I put out a, a web development video. I have a few more uh, sort of ideas in my head. And so maybe I'll I'll hit that up a little bit. If you were all confused <laughs> that I was uh, putting these uh, baseball game uh, things on my channel, don't be confused. That's an actual product that I made. Uh, it's a game, a, a cards and dice um, game, baseball game. And I just needed a place to sort of get the word out a little bit. So that's why I put it on my, my main channel, but it's got its own channel now. Um, <clears throat> So I am still a web developer and that's what I do. Uh, so don't think that I've just switched over or done something different. It's just a side project that I was working on. And uh, I'll try to do more, um, I'll try to do more web development videos uh, as we go along because it's just, uh, there's some, some cool new things, maybe some things to do with Webflow. I have maybe a Webflow project coming up. And so maybe there's some things I'll be learning about Webflow also. And also uh, some interesting things to do with CSS Grid. I've, you know, in my work, this is what I do. And so uh, sometimes I've been getting some funky uh, layouts in Grid, trying to convince my designers to push the limits a little bit. 
And so just trying to figure out, you know, what's the most efficient way uh, to do what they're trying to do at each different breakpoint. So um, maybe I can, I can share uh, what I'm learning on the fly as I'm creating uh, different layouts using CSS Grid as well. All right. Uh, again, leave your comments and suggestions, uh, your feedback, any questions that you have, just leave that down in the comment section below. <clears throat> and I'll get to it as quickly as I can if you if you've asked questions or made comments before, you know I'm on it. So um, just leave those and, and I'll get back to you when I can. And uh, yeah, hit the subscribe button uh, if you want more content. I got tons of videos on the site already and uh, I'll just continue creating them until I can't anymore. But uh, hit subscribe and hit the bell and then you'll get notified whenever I post new content. It'll just come straight to your email or uh, to your uh, YouTube app on your phone or device. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.